dribbly goalkeepers could be the future. I really like this, like, like an extreme false nine. Footballers becoming goalkeepers, like outfield players becoming goalkeepers. Well, so defence will go back to rigid structures at the back to try and just stop. You do your thing on the ball and we'll just wait for you to come and then we'll hit you on the counter. Mate, exactly. Like, it never ends. Let's get into some tactical trends then. So first one, now, we, this was um, revealed on the ripple effect quite some time ago, Corbett. Because what we, we were saying that David Raya, um, Arteta was talking about David Raya and Ramsdale and the difference between those two guys. And what we were saying was that, well, if Arteta feels like there's a real difference between these two guys, what on earth is that? And in the future, what will be the ripple effect of that? And we said at that point, we said dribbly goalkeepers could be the future because you might want to be able to kind of break through a press or something like that. And so that is the first tactical trend that I kind of want to put forward here because the this idea that a lot of teams are sort of playing with a, a, a box and a lot of teams want to press man for man a lot of the time. And a lot one method of bypassing the first phase of the press is to use the goalkeeper as as a progressor. So what are your initial thoughts on this when you when you saw dribbly goalkeepers or ball carrying goalkeepers? Is that something that you straight away went, yeah, that's something that could be? Or does that feel like something that's quite far fetched at this moment? Uh, no, not far fetched at all. Uh, I think that was one of the main reasons why uh, Man United was so adamant on getting on honor in as well uh, as a replacement for De Gea because of his ball playing ability and because if you watched into last season, a lot of the times he would just push forward, not necessarily dribbling the 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 two try or the opposition's press, but he definitely would add these numbers in the first phase of build up. Uh, and I think that's kind of a bit of a downfall for what Man United have faced this season is that he hasn't really done this. He hasn't really been as good as expected during this first phase of build-up. So they've really struggled. But I do see how, yes, teams are relying on goalkeepers more and more often. You definitely need a ball-playing goalkeeper in the modern game just to, even just to be able, if they do press high up, uh, to be able to pick out the, the players up top with a long ball. Even the long ball, in a, in a sense, does seem to be kind of making a little bit of a comeback. Uh, compared, mm -hmm. to the few, uh, compared to a few seasons ago. But I think, I don't know how well maybe the audience would take it because say maybe a, a, <laughs> the goalkeeper starts the dribble, it's successful one or two times, but as soon as he loses the ball, then I feel like the whole right. social media would get on his back and it would get clicked quite a lot. But it's definitely something that, because there's no way to stop the overload of a goalkeeper because you're not going to start pressing with your goalkeeper so you're always going to have that man advantage so if you can integrate him more successfully and you can get him to gain ground and push forward then it is going to be really really difficult for the opposition to stop yeah i agree that's a great that's a really interesting point the idea that you've got a problem with the fact that the the crowd could get in the way of all of this so to explain this a little bit more, and actually we saw it uh, in a recent match between Liverpool and Crystal Palace, where Alisson was just sort of like dribbling and dribbling and dribbling and dribbling. And I think the idea here is that, and you will have seen this with Edison a lot of the time, where Edison will be one that sort of steps in and actually often it kind of turns into a bit of a four. Um, hang on, let me get rid of that. Often it will come into a bit of a four. And, and that's fine. But Edison at no point has the desire and I think probably the physical capabilities to just drive through. And if he was able to drive through, it would open up a lot. And again, I think there's a lot of uh, calling of bluff here when it comes to, to the goalkeepers. And I think the thing with this being a trend in 2024, this will be a YouTube video. I'm going to call it now. Someone, and it'll probably be, call Matt, because you know, we've alerted him to it now. You can have this one. I have to, yeah. Call, it, call this your fee. Um, because, because I think what will happen is it won't be in the, I don't think it'll be in the Premier League because I think it needs to, it needs to be the right profile and you have to be ready to dribble. That's the big thing when it comes to these goalkeepers. Obviously, it's in the title, dribbly goalkeepers. But if you are able to break through, the passing, you know, you obviously take players out of the game and the amount of passing lanes that it takes. Or if you have other people that want to come and press to you as well, that's another way of taking people out of the game as well. So it is an obvious tactic to do. You know, we've seen it in a much simpler scale with John Stone's 
uh, for Man City or, you know, any of these inverted players that are moving from one position to another. It's something that feels a little bit alien and it isn't in the initial plan of the team, of the opponent in terms of stopping them. So when, you know, John Stones or, you know, this has been going on for years and this is what I mean, you know, context is important. You know, if you think of a... Libero, who would dribble out with the ball, Ronald Koeman back in the day, that that would happen. That's fine. But this is the next level of that. And I think when we've seen the amount that goalkeepers are getting on the ball, the amount of touches they're having, the, the amount of times that they're looking to, to bait the press a lot of the time so that you can literally play through that first line of defence. The only thing they're afraid of is coming out of their goal. And I just think this is inevitable. I'm not sure what division it will be. I don't know where it will be, but across Europe somewhere, you'll have a guy who is, is good enough. And if he's good enough, I think the big thing to remember is that you're playing on a carpet. We did a video yesterday talking about Aston Villa and their offside line and the fact that they've got, they're having 74 offsides to the next best, which is 48. That is also, that's another one just to chuck in there. You know, a little bonus one for you there, guys. So if you are enjoying that, then hit the follow button for me. But the, 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 the fact is, is that you've got to use your environment and your surroundings around you. So say with an offside with Aston Villa, they know they've got VAR. Liverpool have done this before to, uh, you know, to a similar extent. Tottenham are doing it as well. And that desire to be able to make the game compact as well allows you to press and it allows less spaces for, for players to make the ball through. So you need every single body that you can have. But you're going to need... The thing that's going to hold it up is the profile of the goalkeeper. Because if you just ask... Nick Pope to start dribbling out it's just, it's just not fair like it's just not fair if you do find the right goalkeeper someone with enough courage to just do it and try it and a manager that allows him to to have this freedom to push up then I think especially at the start it could be extremely dangerous what I, we could also see is I, I think you could see you know footballers becoming goalkeepers like outfield players becoming goalkeepers because that's the, the sort of save element of it, the goalkeeping element of it. And goalkeepers will scream at me here. But I wonder if that's an easier thing to pick up than say you've got an Irish guy who's an amazing rugby player, but he's an amazing footballer as well. And he's a right back and he's six foot two. Get him in goal. <laughs> Get him in goal. Let Ends him dribble. Because it, 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 yeah, because he'd be able to make... You could probably build up those skills if he's played Gaelic football or rugby or whatever it might be. So I think we could see that. And also, yeah, the, the price of the price of goalkeepers could go up if they are that starting point. Yeah, it does seem in, especially in like football, in player development, there is this theme of uh, maybe there's a young player, he's like six or seven and he's a really good striker. But then as these players get older and they're still like good players, the, the trend does seem to be that they slowly get put into deeper and deeper position. So that's why like strikers are so hard to come by because they usually start as strikers and they're so good at being goal scorers that yeah. they just stay strikers. But then there's other players that start as strikers and then maybe they can't finish as well. So they put, put as playmakers and then maybe they transition to holding midfielders. And then that's how you end up with defenders and right backs. So it, it wouldn't be too far-fetched to maybe suggest he just does one step further, <laughs> ends up in goal and then work on the goaling aspect of it as well. But I don't know. I think, yeah, we should definitely shouldn't underestimate the importance of being a shot stopper as well. Right, let's move forward to Space Invaders. I've, this is what we've called. We've called box... I mean, there's a lot of chat about box crashes. But we were suggesting this idea of Space Invaders. Now, again, this is one where it's... It's one where... I think the big one where we've seen it... So in terms of box crashing players, we've seen this a lot with... Uh, Scott McTominay we've seen it with Conor Gallagher I think there's a lot of talk about when there's been over the last few months where there's been a sort of clamouring to find a positive for Kai Havertz for Arsenal it's been it's been that he that is what he can offer that no one else in the Arsenal team can offer is that ability to sort of to crash the box and, and make their make the way into the box and be that extra man again sort of overloads are kind of everywhere now and, and also everyone can see where everyone should be I think in football more so than ever which we'll talk about that as well in some at some point but the the box crash is sort of the McTominay one was the one that I think really kind of pulled it into focus for me and it's those players that are maybe playing in part of a midfield three right now but with an understanding of the positions of so many players 
if there's an opportunity for more of these players that again have a certain skill set that's going to take out certain players uh, but the Space Invaders is, is kind of part of this as well. So the idea here is that, say, Bruno Fernandes, and we saw it time and time again, Garnacho was staying nice and wide in the game against Chelsea. And Bruno Fernandes was working over to this side a hell of a lot. And the reason he was kind of doing that, I think at times, was to sort of bring a, a good few amount of the players over to sort of deal with him. And then in time, that led to Scott McTominay, who is supposedly part of a double pivot or certainly a couple of years ago it was him and Fred you wouldn't have thought of him being making his way into the box but if you watch a Man United game now what you're seeing time and again is his desire and freedom to get himself into the box because he can go and affect the game and I think the thing that I guess we're sort of maybe packaging it up in a sort of fancy way here but I think the idea overall is the fact that players that you think are in one position completely going into a different position. It, the same way of spinning it is, an, it is suggesting it's a bit of an overload, I think, more, more than anything. But the sort of that, again, that if you have someone like Bruno Fernandes going to an area that you're not really expecting him to and it sucks over a few players, it then can lead space for someone who you wouldn't expect to be in that space. I think that's definitely the way it's going is the, the this increasing trend towards overloads and i think the the muddying of the waters like you said as well of between relationism and positionism so teams wanting to create these clusters of players on one side of the pitch and then when you least expect it maybe trying to switch play into another mm-hmm. player it's something that Bayern leverkusen are doing really well this season so they have their their double pivot of uh Xhaka and palacios and they'll start Probably similar structure to what you'd see at Brighton with like the two the two holding the fielders in a close position, helping like link up play in the first phase. But then as soon as they're able to break the first line, one of them will push forward and add a number between the midfield line and the defensive line. One of them will even push up and maybe act as like a second striker or alongside the striker. But I think mm-hmm. what's interesting about this is how, again, going back to the relationship between defense and attack, it's that the way teams are defending is starting to change as well. So I think it was what uh, Spalletti said when he was at Napoli is that lines aren't really a thing anymore. You're starting to get uh, sp- like players that need to recognize the space between the players and not necessarily between the lines. So I think something like this where the players are getting closer and closer together on one side of the pitch does lead to more of these unexpected runs into other position. Teams have kind of figured out positionism to a certain point now. Like they know that Players are going to want to attack the half space. They know which players need to uh, compensate for these runs in behind. So that's changing. So the way teams need to attack as well is changing as well. And you are getting these slightly more fluid structures of you still kind of end up with the five players on the defensive line. Like You, you can still recognize shapes. So yes, the team still maybe starts on a 4-2-3-1, transitions into a 2-3-5 or 3-1-6, whatever you want to call it. But it is getting more and more fluid. Uh, per game like one team will not use the same structure uh every time they attack maybe sometimes it's a two three five then it's a three one six and it's just the players need to recognize when the spaces are available what runs they need to make yeah it is and and that's probably because we can all see it right we can all I think so like, yeah, the, yeah it's all there for us you know you can pop onto y scout and you can or you know others are available and you can watch clips of everyone or just go on youtube and you can see clips of everyone all the time so nothing's nothing sacred for long anymore uh it's just if you want to get give up on your plans to to sort of then find these new plans which is a which exact is an age-old yeah. thing i think i don't know how if tactics are going to speed up as well so now because every everyone knows everything about everyone about every team that you're facing it does that mean that every two seasons three seasons we're going to start getting a shift from attack to defense from defense to attack or is it still going to take the usual 10 15 years that it seems to take for it to really yeah. settle in and and change I, I i think you're right with the first one i think it's it moving so quick i think it's moving so quick and, and i think people are they're brave enough to give it a go if it if they can really identify with it, uh, because I think yes, it feels like a lot of some tactics have kind of been washed away, uh, and I think that like you say, so that muddying the muddying of positional is positional play, sorry, and relationism leading to possibly more players who have that free role uh, is something that I think is interesting here. So it's a mix of the two because I think positional play 
is one. Those two are the two that remain, it feels like. Sort of long ball football, I think overall is really, you know, feels like it's really struggling and is quite easy to sort of uh, to deal with, basically. But this idea of a, a free roll, and again, I think it comes back to what we're talking about in terms of this this sort of second striker. And say McTominay was speaking in a previous idea that him or a Conor Gallagher or uh, a Decore as well. And we'll talk about him in a second because I think there's something interesting there. But th- that you need a second guy now to kind of help out, especially with so much uh, possibility through the central areas, which is a lot of te- what a lot of teams want to be able to kind of do. So again, you want people to be able to move into those different areas. But with the positional understanding that coaches and players alike have, I think the f- and I'm buzzing for this. I want this to be a thing. Is that I think that there'll be more Madisons. I think there'll be more of these roaming players and that that mix. Again, say Bellingham being able to kind of go wherever he wants to go, because those sort of quick fire quick fire overloads is often a thing that people kind of want. Because I think again, the defensive side can spot they can support spot a an overload when everyone sort of trots over to the, okay, we're all going over to this left-hand side. But when Madison comes, and I think it was the game against Luton, maybe, or I can't remember which game it was, but he would, he would pop up in absolutely all areas of the pitch to come and help out to create, okay, let's have a little conversation here. Boom, boom, pop, pop uh, players out. You've got Saar on the other side, who's ready to kind of make that run when he sees Madison go and get involved. And, and that freedom that he has to go and kind of problem solve when he knows the landscape, but I feel like a lot of teams are kind of almost imprisoned by the landscape of their formations a little bit. I think that will be more and more of a thing in the next, in 2024. I think the the rise of number 10s, I think will will become more regular. So the final thing being vertical rotation. So with vertical rotation, obviously we've seen a lot this season of those fullbacks coming in right right at the start obviously we said Cormac said about those inverted fullbacks something that we'd seen one of but we're seeing two of now and at different times and those underlapping runs as well and I just wonder if it might be one again maybe okay we're working around the same ideas here but the the change between we've seen a centre-back moving into centre midfield could we see a centre midfield and a and a striker swapping but like wholeheartedly swapping so you have that second striker that moves to again allow for displacing to allow for those deep running um, movements I think we've seen that with Bellingham once again like is he a forward is he a midfielder is he a striker are we going to see uh, do you think we might see more of that or am I just is that a bit similar to the other things that we've kind of been talking about I think the, the, the thing I was trying to get across was instead of a, a moving moving in it's more of a, a yeah it's moving along uh, I really like this like like an extreme false nine like uh, someone who who drops deep <laughs> like a lot I think like, actually yeah when when I was reading through the notes uh, like looking towards this I thought that was a really good idea and it definitely something you wouldn't expect because you do kind of get strikers who drop deep and help with build up and a little bit more active but mm. to actually replace one of the holding midfielders and allow another player to rotate i think it just adds another dynamic of how you could move the team and how you could create the patterns that you want to create so like if the striker dropped deep as one of the two holding midfielders then the fullback could invert but he could invert much further up the pit so then if you have someone who's capable who's strong who's good physical in the center you could end up having for example your attacking midfielder and your right back are your two most advanced players and your striker and holding midfielder are creating like little patterns in the center i think it's 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 not too far-fetched you just need to have the right players that could that could do something like this yeah i mean often you see it you see in the build-up phase sometimes with uh, you know, someone like say a fullback will look to go, or even there might be a sort of three-quarter ping to from the goalkeeper to to that player, and the the left winger or right winger will then kind of step into this area, and that could allow for a forward to go down the line again as well. So there are always these uh, you know relationships in a game of football. I think Arsenal's an interesting one for me. That I wonder if someone put forward the idea of Gabriel Jesus playing as that that eight that they're trying to kind of totally figure out. But I was just wondering, why don't you just swap Havertz and, and Jesus all the time? Like, that felt like, that feels like a solution 
for me because I think Jesus has a great tenacity, ability to dribble with the ball a lot of the time. And with Kai Havertz, there's a desire for him to be in the box. So can you move these two a little bit more? Because I think at times we've actually seen Kai Havertz come and step out here so Martinelli can come a bit more centrally. Martinelli, uh, sorry, uh, Havertz going out wide. But is that actually the best use of him when you could have a better rotation with him and someone like Gabriel Jesus? I just think, yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, sort of out to in and maybe a sort of uh, in possession, a centre-back moving into centre midfield. Fair enough. But I, I wonder if we'll see a little bit more, a little bit higher up the pitch. The uh, only in thing the, that in comes to mind for me is m- maybe a potential issue with having uh, players making vertical runs at, for support is that it just compacts the centre a lot more. And then if you have your fullbacks inverting, potentially that does mm. free up channels out wide into the wingers for 1v1. But if the fullbacks stay wide, then and it's the strikers dropping deep, I don't know how much space that would actually free up because yeah, you'd have to... Yeah, well, you'd, uh, I don't know how. I don't it's know also how about body end. language, I think, at times. You know, so if like there's, I used to, when I used to play, there's a, there's a simple rule that I would say if I was playing centre midfield with another guy, I would say, if I'm in front of you, that means you've got to stay back. <laughs> so like that's so simple, and like, this is very basic football here, right? But sometimes you'd have, I'd go, you'd, I'd make a run into the box or something like that, and then he would go and make a run. I go, if you can see me in front of you, you're the last guy, so sit. Right, and I, I wonder if again with a Jesus and a Havertz is that if if Je, if Jesus uh, has got his back to goal, that's your that's Havertz's trigger to to make the run if he wants to make the run. But if he's not, if he's facing that way, then it's stupid. You need to stay where you are. So maybe it's it's about again that interaction with each other, which again comes back to that that mix between positional football and relationism, which I think relationism will. People will dive into it more and more, um, but then people will... I think the root out of it is often positionalism defensively, I think, sometimes. Yeah, so... Especially, it depends yeah. where the players are, right? Well, so defence will go back to rigid structures at the back to try and just stop. You do your thing on the ball and we'll just wait for you to come and then we'll hit you on the counter. Mate, exactly. Like, it never ends. It never ends. Um, but it's good fun. It is good fun. 